Hi guys, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2019, A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 12. Alright, Question 12 goes something like this. The following reactions at 298K form an energy cycle. So essentially, we have four equations to consider. So later, we will run through each one of them in detail. We have delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, and delta H4. So which description of one of the enthalpy changes is correct? That means out of four of them, three of them are false, only one is true, right? So we want to run through each one of them. So statement A, enthalpy change for reaction number one, it is the enthalpy change of combustion of C6H12 liquid. So what we will need to do is we will have to look at the first equation describing enthalpy change of reaction number one. Then we see whether it is consistent with enthalpy change of combustion of C6H12. Now, in this case, we will have to be familiar with the definition involving all the enthalpy change terms in syllabus. Enthalpy change of combustion is to burn one mole of substance in excess oxygen to give me whatever amount of products all under standard condition. So combustion of C6H12, we would expect I burn one mole of C6H12 in excess oxygen to give me carbon dioxide and water, and everything has to be under standard state. So looking back at the first equation, enthalpy change of reaction number one is describing this reaction, C6H12 liquid, one mole of it, so reasonable so far, plus nine O2 gas, of course, assuming that this is balanced, so this will be the amount of O2 that will completely react with C6H12 to give me six carbon dioxide gas and six water in the gaseous state. Now at first glance, this equation looks reasonable because this one is describing the combustion of one mole of C6H12. The issue with this guy is the state symbol for water because water, it has to be under standard condition. So we will expect for enthalpy change of combustion of C6H12, the physical state for water should be in the liquid state instead of the gaseous state. So statement A is false since we should be talking about water in the liquid state instead of water in the gaseous state. Now you notice what we will have to be familiar with is the definitions and taking into consideration the state symbols so that we can answer such questions. And it is actually very fundamental for us to be familiar with all the definitions involving all the enthalpy change terms that we have learned under energetics because we will need to make use of all these equations to draw energy cycle. So if you are not familiar with one enthalpy change term, then it is very difficult for you to put everything together into a decent energy cycle and solving calculation questions involving energetics. So it is very fundamental, but it is very, very important. Now moving on, option B, enthalpy change for the second reaction, it is the enthalpy change of formation of C6H12. Now formation, it is to form one more of that compound from its constituent elements in the standard state. So in this case, we would expect the elements that form C6H12 to be carbon, graphite, and hydrogen gas. So let's look at the enthalpy change for the second reaction, which is here. So what we have here is six carbon graphite in a solid state plus six H2 gas plus nine O2 gas to give me C6H12 liquid plus nine O2 gas. Now, in this case, we will ignore the oxygen because in the reactant, I have nine O2. In the products, I also have nine O2. So this O2 is not taking part in the reaction, so we will just ignore the oxygen in this process. So effectively, the process is talking about converting carbon, graphite, and hydrogen gas to one mole of C6H12 in the liquid state. So this is pretty consistent with what we understand for enthalpy change of formation, right? Forming one mole of the compound from elements in the standard state. So B, most likely it is the answer. It is true because I'm forming one mole of C6H12 from elements in its standard state. Of course, we want to move on to C and D and we see whether we can prove that C is wrong and D is wrong. Then finally, B will be the best answer. Now moving on for C, 
Enthalpy change for the third reaction is six times atomization of H2 gas. Now, let's look at the enthalpy change for reaction number three, which is here. Now, this process is converting six carbon in the solid state plus six H2 gas plus 9O2 to six carbon in the solid state plus 12 hydrogen atom plus 9O2 gas. Again, you'll notice there's only one species that is taking part in the reaction. It is involving the hydrogen because for carbon, carbon in the solid state to carbon in the solid state, there's no change. So this reaction doesn't involve carbon. Similarly, for oxygen, 9O2 gas to 9O2 gas, it doesn't involve oxygen. So we can ignore that. So this process is related to 6H2 gas to 12 hydrogen atom. Now, this understanding for option C, it hinges on whether we are familiar with enthalpy change of atomization or not. Now, atomization is defined with respect to per mole of atom that we are forming. It is not with respect to per mole of element that we are atomizing. So in this case, we should focus on the atoms that is being formed. So if I want to define enthalpy change of reaction tree in terms of atomization, then I should focus on the atoms that I'm forming since I'm forming 12 hydrogen atom. So this process, it should be 12 times atomization of hydrogen. It is not six times atomization of hydrogen because atomization is with respect to the number of mole of atom that I'm forming. So the reference point becomes important. If you're not familiar with the reference point, this enthalpy change is it with respect to the reactant or is it with respect to the product? If you're not familiar with the reference point, then we will make this kind of mistake. So in this case for option C, it is not true because atomization it is with respect to atoms. So it should be 12 times atomization instead of six times atomization. Now finally, option D, enthalpy change for the fourth reaction, it is six times enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide plus the enthalpy change of formation of water in the gaseous state. Now let's take a look at reaction number four, which is here. So the reactant is six carbon graphite plus 12 hydrogen atom plus nine O2 gas to give me six carbon dioxide gas and six water in the gaseous state. So in this case, is it related to formation of carbon dioxide gas and water in a gaseous state? So remember enthalpy change of formation, it is forming one mole of that compound from its elements in a standard state. So in this case, if I consider carbon dioxide, is this related to six times formation of carbon dioxide? In this case, it is valid because I'm forming CO2 from carbon graphite which is the element in the standard state, and oxygen, which is O2 gas, also element in the standard state. So this is related to formation of CO2, and since I have six moles of CO2 form, so this is related to six times formation of CO2. So with respect to carbon dioxide, I think this is valid. Now with respect to water, what is interesting is I'm forming water from hydrogen atom and oxygen element. So what is important that we have to keep in mind is when we consider formation, we are forming compound from elements in its standard state. So the problem here is my hydrogen. Hydrogen, it is hydrogen atom. It is not hydrogen element. Now the difference between hydrogen atom is hydrogen by itself. Hydrogen element, it exists as H2 gas. So this is not hydrogen element in its standard state. So this is the problem here. So the issue here is this process, it doesn't really describe the formation of water because hydrogen, it is not as an element, not H2, but rather it is hydrogen atom. So D will have to be false since it should be hydrogen gas, H2 gas element instead of hydrogen gas atoms. So this question essentially is pretty simple because it just requires us to be very familiar with the definition for enthalpy change terms. In fact, the question is only testing us on combustion, formation, and atomization. And we have a lot of other terms in energetics that we have to be familiar with. So this question is not that difficult. It's just a bit tedious. We have to look at each of these statements, see whether 
Is it true or not true? So running through the options, we have already determined A is false, B is true, C and D are false. So since the question asks me which description is correct, so the answer to this question will be option B. Alright, so that was the discussion involving question 12, which is a question on energetics. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.